All right, YouTube, I'm back with another video. We got top 10 best DC games. Let's get to the video, man. IGN, if you mess up on this list, I will rage and I'm not, bro, I will crash out. I promise you, I'm not holding up. Let's go. What's up, IGN, you, this list Gale better be here, perfect. Let me tell you, deciding the hey. 10 best DC video games requires superhuman stamina because, oh boy, are they. The Batman Arkham series better be number one. It better be number one. The Batman Arkham series better be number one. Beginning, starting with Superman for the Atari way back in 1979, just one year after Christopher Reeve's iconic. This list better be perfect. I promise you. Since then, the number of DC games has flown up, up, and away with over a hundred games in their catalog to date. And half of them... The Batman games. Arkham games Just better kidding. be top three, three, top four. DC's world of super-powered heroes and larger-than-life villains has proven to be... I never play Infinite Crisis. I never played that. Beat -em -ups to high oh, this is the, uh, the Telltale game. They made for games that range from family-friendly fun to disturbing crime thrillers, from cheap movie tie-ins to genre-defining masterpieces. Oh my god, Green Lantern. everything in between. When the world meets heroes, the justice with no one else is in their league. To determine our ranking, IGN's resident DC fans assembled to debate and shout about our favorites, not unlike all the DC villains used to do in the old Super Friends cartoon. Okay. Stupid plan. Take care of Super Friends myself. Silence. The games I thought that was he, man. Play, oh my god, Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe is amazing. Story. Be authentic to the DC characters we know and love and capture the feeling. Okay, I want that list. IGN, After let me see that list. Trial and tribulation, IGN, let me get that list. Here we go. Legos, DC Super. Alright, cool. Alright, cool. It's the Legos game. The first brick to build the foundation of this list is Lego DC Super Villain. Yes, there are three other DC Lego games, all headlined by Batman, and we know Lego Batman 2 DC Superheroes is a fan favorite. We like it too, but the baddies steal the win on this one. Lego DC Super Villains incorporates all the great ideas that have made the Lego game so popular, blending easily accessible gameplay with a silly sense of humor that has fun okay. with the licensed property at hand. So Lex, as you can't be trusted at all, True. maybe we should ask the rookie to be our new boss. What sets DC supervillains above the rest is the voice cast. While Lego Batman 2 was the first to feature fully voice acted dialogue, the third entry assembled a Mount Rushmore of familiar talent. Kevin Conroy as Batman, Mark Kevin Hamill as the Joker, and Matt Tim Hamill as Harley Quinn. Not only that, Nathan Drake's Nolan North is the villainous Ultraman. Bro, Ultraman. Matt Hamill's the perfect voice for, uh, for Joker, bro. Doing their thing while enjoying puzzles and collecting is absolutely sublime. And shouldn't we try to find Superman? After all, he has more powers than you, doesn't True. he, Batman? True. As the he title does. suggests, the story he mixes does. things up by focusing on the villains. Traditional DC baddies are forced to defend the world from a group of evil Justice League knockoffs, the Justice Syndicate, which leads to all manner and of And why couldn't the so and humorous in I'm sorry, I'm sorry to pause it, right? Because I just don't want to, I don't like to pause it, but I'm just going to have to pause it. <laughs> why? The Suicide Squad kid of Justice League. Why didn't they do this? Why didn't they make a knockoff uh, uh, Justice League where 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 the, where the where the Suicide Squad can beat them up instead of beating up the real? You know, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop complaining. A I'm gonna stop complaining. I'm gonna stop bumbling. I'm gonna stop. All the way from their look down to their abilities, and then watching the creation you built become a part of the story. And with the game featuring not only DC locations Gotham City and Metropolis, but others such as Oa, the Was that Solomon Grundy? Lego DC Supervillains is a true representation of the entire DC universe in Lego form. What's number nine? Batman the Video Game, 1990. Oh my Batman, god. Batman the Video Game, released in 1989 <laughs> for the NES, loosely adapts the story of the first Tim Burton Batman movie. That might have been easy to figure out based on the title, but that's about the only easy thing about it. As this side-scrolling running gunner, or, or I'm gonna be honest Ranger, with you, is I never played this before. This is this is ridiculous. Graphics are a one, just barbecue sauce. Killer Moth, Electrocutioner, and Firebug. But this game was so hard that most of the game's target demographic probably never got far enough to see them all. And anyone who did can likely attest that a dance in the devil in the pale moonlight was child's play compared to the brutally difficult final boss fight against the Joker. I mean, it's a, oh my God, he threw him out the castle. 
threw that man out the, at the Princess Pearl's meeting, castle. Staff who recall playing the game all had thousand yard stares like soldiers remembering the war. Or for a more appropriate DC metaphor, they looked like wealthy billionaire orphans reflecting on their parents' death. Please, tell me that it's okay. But you might ask yourself, if this game is so tough, then why do we consider it one of the best from DC's catalog? Despite the difficulty, it channeled the gothic vibe of the movie with a moody and banging soundtrack. Looked great with a bizarre. I never heard the soundtrack before. Hello, purple Batman. Listen, listen, and listen. Had lots of wild jumping ninja listen, action. Listen, respectfully. It really did take you to Gotham respectfully, City, as unforgiving and cruel as that place may be. Respectfully, the Arkham series better be number one. DC Online. Oh my God, forgot Why about this. We trust you, because if you don't, Earth is doomed. DC Universe Online is I remember a this. really ambitious entry on this list, undertaking the superheroic task of turning the DCU into an MMORPG. Now, can I be honest with y'all? Oh my god, these cutscenes, wait a minute. Launched in 2011 with the most badass superhero cinematic ever made, the game has been ongoing for over a decade and has amassed a dizzying amount of content from character customization options and hideouts to stories and missions what type of cinematic characters what type of cinema i've never seen a cinematic before simply put dcuo is the most expansive and comprehensive version of the dcu ever created in a video game and that's something no other title on this list even comes close to matching you've lost everything no i beat you <laughs> Ooh. That said, DCUO is not without its flaws. The action gameplay is fast and loose, perhaps too fast and loose for some people's taste, and like other older MMORPGs, its uh -huh. visuals haven't exactly kept up with the times. Still, it is uh -huh. the only game where you can team up with Wonder Woman, zip across an open world at super speed as you run up walls and across water, and team up with your friends to take on raid bosses such as Brainiac and Darkseid. For all that, we can't help but rank it among the best options gamers have when it comes to enjoying the DCU to the fullest okay. extent. Okay, what's number eight? Uh, uh, after your head. What are you, you put do? Origins at number eight? Batman Arkham Origins may be the black sheep of the Arkham games, but at the end of the day, it's still a decent Batman game. Instead of Rocksteady, this game was made by WB Games Montreal, which gave the game a noticeably different feel in gameplay and polish. The story is a thin excuse like for Origins, to though. against numerous villains and goons, but when you're doing it using Arkham you mean thugs? system, it's hard not to have a good time. Oh my god. In this prequel, the plot sees Batman as the target of eight deadly assassins who just happen yep. to be villains from his rogues gallery, which explores some core Batman themes, namely his code against taking a life and his motivation for fighting crime solo. It also shows how he made two of the most significant relationships in his life, his partnership with Jim Gordon and his rivalry with the Joker. The story of both the classic comic the Batman Joker. year one, which is certainly a praiseworthy comparison. <gasps> Speaking of the Joker, even though this game uses different voice actors than the mainline Arkham games, Troy Baker delivers a standout performance as the Clown Prince of Crime. Other highlights of the game. I was surprised that was Troy Baker, bro. Detective skills to solve crimes, some serious upgrades to his combat arsenal, and an array of unique and entertaining boss fights against master murderers and a crocodile. Oh, killer croc. Oh, you know what? My father, Thomas Wayne, was a criminal. Everything I thought I knew about I would put this in the top five, bro. Changed forever. This one was Shifting good. This was our Telltale. To adventure, Telltale Games' first Batman game was no slouch in terms of spinning an this, intricate it, it, This was good, bro. Follow-up, The Enemy Within, is better in every way. The premise of Batman becoming personally invested in Joker's origin is more intriguing. The action feels it livelier, is, bro. looks more dynamic, and the choices you're faced with are far juicier, leading to permanent physical and emotional damage being done to the main cast of characters. I, was, now, I respect this, bro. Everyone knows the gist of how Batman's stories go and how his relationships know, form. Listen, all I know is throws convention out the window and lets us make all I know is irreversible changes. Batman that have a Arkham big impact on the night better be story. number one. Essentially, this game lets you customize your own Batman story, and that's pretty dang cool. We're taking the Batmobile. We're taking the Batmobile. <laughs> the enemy within makes good use of its uh -oh, mature uh -oh. rating. Sloice that finger. In particular, going full saw mode. Years before Paul Dano's death. That's the, the Riddler. Batman. Sloice. There's plenty of violence to be had as Bruce Wayne goes undercover and attempts to prove himself to a team of supervillains to join their gang. 
it's not a typical scenario we often see the character in, and it's full of tension. But it's different, though. I like, I like that it's different. It might forever change Bruce and those he cares for. I like that it's different. The design deserves praise as well, with the bat suit looking sharper and cooler than ever, and Joker's transformation becoming more and more unsettling as the story yep. reaches its inevitable end. This I actually like the Joker in this one. Called to order. <laughs> School a threat. quick aside before we continue, it goes without saying that Telltale's Wolf Among Us is also an excellent game, and some may it argue is. it should be on this list because DC published the Fables comic it's based on, but we decided to leave it off because technically it was published under their Vertigo label and does not exist within the DC universe or involve superheroes like the other entries. Oh, so they're, oh, so they're being, they're being exact. For being awesome. Okay, moving on. Injustice gods okay. You're afraid. Now the Injustice, Injustice gods among us. Injustice was a good game. The Mortal Kombat games and adds in the bombastic superpowers. Injustice was a good game. Injustice was a good game. Okay. All right, cool. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. I was about to and say, is this could really go fighting. go at six. For NetherRealm Studios first try their hand but I give it to you. DC characters into the fighting ring with Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe, which was flawed but filled with potential. Injustice fully realizes that potential and then some. It's easy to see the game was made with nothing but love for the DC Universe, as the characters are all spot on from looks to voices to movesets, and they even acknowledge their opponent with custom dialogue referring to their comics history. We've all seen how much superhero battles affect the environment around them in movies, and Injustice plays into that by letting you crush your foe with a car or hit I respect them so that. hard. I love fighting games state, that do that. Cartoonishly knocking into hazards along the way. Yep, you're going through like you're going through like eight buildings, yep. Yep, all types of Nissans and everything are, are, are gone. The best part of Injustice Gods Among Us is the story, which shows what happens when Superman falls to the dark side. An original idea? Not exactly, but no. it's the execution that matters. And Injustice does an incredible job showing DC's heroes and villains picking sides in a superhuman war while playing against long-held relationships to drive up the emotional stakes. The tie-in prequel comic book series was Bro, the Flash in that Something game was crazy. And it the Flash in this game is crazy. Events. Injustice does have a few issues, like some bulky costume design choices and attacks that are way too over the top, even for DC. But it's hard to be too bothered by them with such a captivating story and extra crunchy fighting system. Injustice 2? You're supposed to be my friend. I hated, the super I hated that Superman. Well, I did not like how the Superman the looked in this game. Injustice 2 elevated the gameplay, polish, and extra features. I did not like how the Superman looked in this game. I'm, I'm going to be real. I didn't. I didn't like it. New designs, the new customization mode let you adjust those designs to look however you want. The cast of playable fighters expanded to include fan favorites such as Blue Beetle and Supergirl, heavy hitters like Darkseid and Atrocitus, and dream come true guest characters, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, all four of them, and freaking Hellboy. They're all Hellboy. Of authenticity and flair, and the fighting mechanics. And hey, y'all see the new Hellboy? Hellboy, he's skinny, impactful. bro. A marked improvement on the first game's already solid foundation. A hey, gorilla, a hey, gorilla Grud, gorilla Grud, whatever your name is, you're terrible. How'd you get whooped? The story oh, of Injustice Two is enjoyable, but admittedly does not capture the same magic as the first. Hey, it's never easy to capture lightning in a bottle twice even with Raiden on the roster. That said, the plot does have its moments, as Batman is faced with new threats in the form of Brainiac and the Society, and is forced to consider turning to evil Superman for help. It's an insidiously delicious premise that makes for some truly outstanding character moments. What's, now, what's number three? The Justice games are both great, which is why what's they number three? deliver a one-two punch right next to each other on this list. But all even number three the story isn't quite as good as the first one, we gave Injustice all two number the three. edge for its improved and endlessly fun fighting mechanic. All, listen, the final three better be the whole Batman Arkham series. City, Asylum, and Night. Knights better be number one. City can be... Mm, Night can be number one. Asylum better be number two. And City be num better be number three. If Night is not number one, I'm crashing out. Besides, the sequel has Dexter, the murderous space cat, and we have no choice but to reward that. Look me at your peril. 
All right, that was the first seven entries on our list. And let's be real, we all know the remaining three are the Batman Arkham games. But what order are they in? You'll have to stick around to find out. But before we get right. to that, let's highlight some honorable mentions. These DC I, I, games I, aren't okay. top tier for one reason or another. Okay, let me just, you know, you know we're just going to skip that right. I know, I'm, I know my thing probably lagging right now. Y'all give me some seconds. You just haven't lived until you've seen Atomic One. Excuse me, y'all. Hold up, y'all. I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, accidentally, like you know, spoil it. Asylum. Okay. 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 Asylum. All right. All right. I said Asylum was is supposed to be at number two. Yep, number three on our list is the one that started it all, Batman Arkham Asylum. I said Asy me. Asylum supposed to be at number two, but they gave it a number three, Arkham okay. Games transformed the superhero game genre with something that hadn't been seen before and hasn't been easy to top since. The phrase, it really makes you feel like a superhero, can often sound silly, but nowhere is it more apt than Arkham Asylum. The way its predator stealth sections Listen, evoke the feel of Christian Bale's I'll put this at number two, Crusader, but they put it at number three, so we'll let it, we'll let it slide. Begins, complete with watching panicked henchmen fire wildly into the shadows. Is oh, it's the bat! The decision to keep Rocksteady's introduction to the series solely inside Arkham Asylum was a stroke of genius. Mixing Metroidvania exploration with action and stealth confined to grimy and claustrophobic spaces. It truly captured the oppressive nature of a prison for the criminal agency. Bro, their names would be Thug later, or or Asylum militia. A that, that experience <laughs> as a must play for anyone who's ever wanted to be the bat. Whoa, no! No, 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 no. I'm gonna crash out. I'm gonna crash out. No, 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 no. No, no, uh-uh, we're not doing that. See, we're not doing that. No, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. No, no, no. Whoever made this list, run my fade. Run my fade. Whoever made this list, run my fade immediately. No, 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 no. No, no. No, <laughs> no, I love, listen, I love Arkham City, but there's no shot Arkham City is better than Arkham Knight. In what world? Not mine. What? For the hero, the only and you, true uh, conclusion. And to the guy that's talking right now, that's commentating, shout out to you, bro. You seem like we a sweet guy. You better not say, asylum? oh, the car. Yes, we did. But this was not a decision made lightly. At least one IGN staffer left the debate branded with a bad symbol. You should really get that looked at. Just to show how closely these games are rated by fans, even the IGN community vote in our last Super Game video poll came down to only a 0.5% difference out of more than 20,000 votes in Arkham Knight's favor. But anyway, while Asylum's praise is well deserved for creating the foundations of the Arkham series, Knight builds an extremely impressive experience on those foundations that represent the best aspects of what a superhero game can be. It even manages to twist the cliche of open world bloat by presenting so many side activities as Gotham's rogues gallery pressing in from all sides to heighten the feeling of an overwhelmed Dark Knight. It is debatable whether throwing in a Batmobile tank was the best idea, especially one that could sneak. How is that even possible? Bro, Batman had to fight a thousand villains in this game. Batman was going up against the whole, he was going up against the whole clan in one night. He was, bro, he was going up against every villain in one night. Of course he, it could, huh? What are we talking, bro? Batman had to go up against, bro. Come on, bro. But it is while fighting the toxin, bro. It's worth acknowledging how much the Batmobile sections help to add variety to the already excellent combat loop of detective work, predator stealth encounters, and bashing heads. Ah! Oh, no, no! Ooh. Not An additional point in Arkham Knight's favor is just how well it presents a variety of boss fights, in addition to knowing when they aren't needed. Like Joker injecting himself with Titan, Rocksteady definitely had some growing pains during Asylum, while Knight has Batman facing off against several of Gotham's most wanted in more finely tuned and engaging Menaces. boss battles. Menaces. And being able to haul the villains back to lock up yourself and watch the cells fill might be just one of the most satisfying moments in the series. 
a lot can be said about this story. Like, was anyone really surprised by the identity of the Arkham Knight? If you're a longtime Batman fan, probably not. But as a longtime Batman fan, it also had some insane stuff I've never seen before. Like the Joker haunting Batman, appearing out of nowhere to psychologically torture him. It was brilliant stuff. All right, we'll give it to him. It's no Arkham City. Hey, about you. Hugo Strange was a bro. Let me tell y'all something. Hugo Strange in, in Arkham City was a school threat, school menace, school menace. This man was in a lab cooking up, literally. He was in a lab cooking up, bro, making, bro, making all types of uh, 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 obnoxious enemies. I don't know what type of word I just said. This man Hugo Strange was a diabolical demon, bro. Couldn't be trusted. Give this man a give this man a carving knife and a syringe. It's up. It's up. He's making a new monster tonight. Come on, bro. I know you are Bruce Wayne. We all knew it would end like this. Batman Arkham City is hands down the best DC game ever made. It took the superb, satisfying combat encounters and horror teen. That's why I'm, that's why I'm not really I'm not really upset. It's Arkham City, bro. City. It was Arkham this City, bro. This grew in scope and scale beyond our wildest imagination, yet never lost its intimate focus on the Dark Knight's war on crime. And boy, is there a lot of crime. With Gotham City walled off and a supervillain gang war erupting inside, the game world comes alive with tension and danger around every corner. But with the extremely fun new ability to glide across the city and seamlessly drop down on goons like a bat out of hell, there's no place we'd rather be. Between side missions, bonus challenges, and 400 Riddler trophies, there's always something Bro. to keep you engaged. And this the all Riddler, makes the city feel alive the Riddler in this in game? desperate need of some cape. Oh my god. I have powerful friends, Batman. You've become what you've always fought against, and I will stop you. The story is the best we've ever seen in a DC game, as voice actors Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill deliver arguably their best performances and push these longtime arch rivals well past their breaking points. Listen, here's what I'll say, right? <clears throat> here's what I'll say. Arkham City, villain like Arkham City villain wise, in my opinion, it uh, man, they cause cause in Arkham City, if you guys didn't know, they had Hugo Hugo Strange was like the big, you know, was like the big thing. The Riddler was a big thing. Uh, uh, Harvey Dent was a really big thing. Um, oh, man. Who else? Who else? Who else? Oh, who else? Who else? Who else? Of course, Joker. Um, but, bro, I just remember the Riddler. The Riddler was so irritating. I hated the Riddler when I was younger, bro. I hated him. But here's the thing, though. Bro, if the Riddler was more... If, if the Riddler didn't want Batman... I mean, and that's his whole point of his character, right? He he leaves riddles. The whole point of of his of his like niche or whatever is so Batman can like keep chasing him. Like he wants to keep dropping riddles here and there, so Batman can just keep chasing him, whatever. But obviously, you know, Batman is Batman, so like like I don't know, like you know, Bat like it, Arkham City can definitely be number one. I'm not complaining about that. It's just, bro, Arkham Knight, bro. That's the be bro. If we're talking about graphically, bro, we're talking about the story. We're talking about the villains, bro. We talk about the plot twist. Like, come on, bro. I think that's number one, bro. Number one. And then you know you're gonna have a lot of people complaining. Oh well, Batman. He kept using the uh, the, the 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 Batmobile, brother, brother, brother. Batman was going up against the best of the best that night. You do, do you want do you want me to run it back? Do you want to, do you want me to tell you the people who was he he was going up against? Batman was going up against the, the, the bro the top of the top, bro bro. In Arkham Knight, Batman was LeBron James going up against the Warriors, going up against the 2017 Warriors that night. Batman was dropping 60 a game in that one night. He was literally collecting these villains like bro, bro, like uh like 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 Infinity Stones, bro, and taking them to jail back to back to back. Poison Ivy in jail. Uh, uh, the 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 rest of those Jokers. I mean, they weren't in jail, but he he kind of had to capture them. Um, 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 who else? Penguin jail. Come on, bro. He bro. He bro. I mean, the Joker. He was dead, but bro, this man Batman. He had the toxin. He was going up against these villains. He had Joker popping out of nowhere. Uh, bro. Come on, bro. He bro. He went up against Arkham Knight. Like. And that whole Arkham Knight thing, I understand why, like, Arkham, Arkham Knight was Arkham Knight. I understand that. But at the end of the day, you can't blame Batman for... 
bro, you was hit, bro. Bro, that man Joker stuffed you into a, a, a cubicle and shipped you to Antarctica. No wonder Batman couldn't find you. Like, like I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, he did replace you. Like, I, yeah, he, he did replace you. But at the end of the day, I mean, it, it, bro, he, he couldn't find you, bro. That man Joker had you stuffed up in a, stuffed up in a, in, in, a, in an Amazon box, bro. Like he couldn't find you. I mean, I'm sorry, bro. I mean, and I, I, I understand your pain, bro. But that's just what it was, you know. Um, at, at the end of the day, man, I just think that in my personal opinion that Batman Arkham Knight is the best Batman, sorry, is the best superhero, uh, game, um, ever. I don't care. Uh, yep. Sp it's better than Spider-Man 2. It's better than all the, all the Spider-Man games. I just think that the Batman Arkham series in general is the best superhero video game series ever. You can, you can, you can argue with your mama. Don't argue with me. I, I, I gave you my piece. Other than that, man, um, I'm actually reacting to the Batman Arkham Knight cutscenes on my channel. Make sure you guys go re uh, go go watch those. I think I got about uh, three parts out right now. Uh, part four and part five should be out today, uh, later today. So make sure you guys go check those out. I'm actually gonna put actually when I'm done, I'm actually gonna put all of those into a playlist so you don't gotta you know search or whatever. You can just go to the playlist and you can just watch them back to back to back to back. Uh, I'm, I'm having a really fun time. And then hey, comment down below some more you know series or whatever, some more Batman games, whatever. I'm I'm actually thinking about doing GTA 5 after this and then uh, doing Arkham City after this as well. You know, along with uh, other game trailers and uh, game plays and, and and Minecraft and I also got Pole World coming through too. So it's gonna be a lot of content coming through and. February and March. So make sure you guys stay tuned. See you guys later for the next one. I'm out. And make sure you guys subscribe, by the way. I know a lot of you guys don't, a lot of you guys just watching, you know, subscribe. Only over, only over 90%. Over 90%. Subscribe. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right.